G'day guys, welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy the German Shepherd. Today, we're gonna to talk about five things to know before getting a German Shepherd. Now, a couple of these things are actually gonna be really German Shepherd specific, then the other things will also be pretty just dog specific in general. So, let's get stuck into it. Number one, don't let people feed your German Shepherd treats. Now what I mean by this is, just don't let random strangers give your dog free treats out in the park by people who I like to call feeders. What's a feeder? It's essentially that. It's an individual who strolls around the dog park with a little treat pouch on them, dishing out free treats to every dog from here to kingdom come. Now, these people mean well, but their actions can be quite detrimental, especially with a dog like Lucy. Here's why. Lucy has a really bad digestive problem that we have now got a hold of, thank God. But if she consumes any food outside of the realm of her prescribed diet, it's actually gonna give her chronic diarrhea. <laughs> Which that means she'll have diarrhea for the next 10 to 12 hours, she'll lose a kilo or two, her butt's gonna hurt, my nose is gonna hate life, and the poor garden outside's gonna get destroyed. So we have a whole chain reaction of problems. The next thing, if your German Shepherd's gonna be anything like Lucy, they're probably gonna have some similarities around food drive. Lucy is extremely driven when it comes to food. So when individuals like to dish out free food to Lucy at the park, you're actually taking away one of my tools that I like to use for her training. I like to use meal times, no matter how big or small, as an opportunity to sharpen her training. So Lucy essentially doesn't get any free food, whether I do a whole 30 minute training session with her bowl of food, or I might get her just to do one or two things for her bowl of food. At the end of the day, I like to utilize her food drive for training, and that's half the reason why I've got such a sharp dog. So when individuals give her free food, you're taking away one of the tools and one of the main assets I have when it comes to training my dog. Number two, it's okay to say no to people, and you probably bloody should start. Now, when I first got Lucy, one of the biggest mistakes I made was I felt like I had a duty of care to essentially grant anyone permission who wanted it to come up and pat Lucy whenever they felt like it. And thus, me by doing this, I essentially over-socialized Lucy to the point where she started finding more value in other people and other things than she did with me. Now, I was very lucky in the sense that she's a pretty receptive dog and I conducted a lot of obedience training with her. Listen up, maggots, you're in my house now. There are no belly scratches here. So I could start to see the problem arising before it got too big. What, so what I essentially started doing was saying no to people who wanted to come up and give Lucy a pat. No! And to give her attention. Now, I started implementing this in the street first showing her there's no value in those people. There's only value in me. And then within time, I also then started implementing this in the park. But by doing this, it means you just can't sit there and swipe on your phone and look at Instagram. You have to be interactive with your dog. And that's essentially what I did. I started just standing off to the side of the park with Lucy and we would be conducting training drills and playing and doing all of our things and we just started doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to the point where now Lucy finds zero value in any other people or any other dog, which is fantastic. So essentially me starting to emphasize the word no, essentially started building my relationship with Lucy much stronger. And I believe with the German Shepherd, you gotta have that extra tight bond. So some people could say it was a little bit selfish to start saying no, but at the end of the day, my German Shepherd's my responsibility. She's my dog. And the only person that needs to be giving my dog affection is me. She doesn't need to get it from anyone else. And once I realized that early on, all my other problems started to go away. Again, emphasizing there is zero value in that person and that situation or that dog, and there's only value in me. Now, I completely understand, and this is super true as well. Dogs do need to be socialized, but not to the point where I over-socialized Lucy, because again, I made a big mistake. I over-socialized Lucy. I turned her into a socialite to the point where Lucy even got invited to non-dog events. 
Number three, right tools for the right job. This is what I mean. So as you guys are probably aware, I'm a big advocate of using a prong collar. I think they're an amazing training tool and they're always gonna be a tool that I have in my arsenal. Now, on the flip side of that, I've actually just started using a gentle leader with Lucy in something else that I've been doing. And I actually think that is an amazing tool as well. So what I'm trying to say is, use the right tool for the right job. Now. These two different tools are kind of from two different areas of training. And with these two different areas of training, you're essentially getting two different types of people. Now, you're gonna get people who love prong collars, and you're gonna get people who hate prong collars, and vice versa with gentle leaders and things like that. Now, I don't wanna sit on sides. I don't wanna go, I only do this method, or I only do that method. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Now, this is all my personal opinion, obviously, but I'm a big believer in utilizing the right tool for the right job at the right time. So I discovered at the moment, Lucy and I are conduct, uh, we're doing these uh, runs and I've got this nice running system lead that I connect to Lucy and I found out that the prong collar isn't the best tool for that, nor is even a flat collar. So what I've been doing now, I've actually purchased a gentle leader and I've discovered the gentle leader is actually the right combination for the runs that we've been doing connected to the new lead system for those runs. So what I'm trying to say is, don't be afraid to flip at a dime and utilize a completely different method or tool for your dog. Don't get caught up in the, I only use this system or I only use that. I don't think that's the right way to look at things. Now, as I said, I'm a big advocate of prong collars. I think that they are a great method. I love, I love e-collars. I've never used an e-collar, but I understand why people use e-collars. They are needed in this space, especially when it comes to high caliber dogs. So the biggest thing with the e-collar is to understand that it's not an aversive tool. Um, could it be? Sure, but you know, so could vehicles, you know, if we didn't use them right. And I love the gentle leader. Like, I think that's a fantastic training tool. And I think everyone should own one of those as well. So guys, right tool for the right jobs. As long as you have the right training behind it, it is all perfectly safe and don't get stuck on your sides. Number four, this is probably gonna be one of the most terrifying things you've heard in a while, but it is very true. And what makes this all that more terrifying is, I nearly see this on an everyday basis. If you're an individual who goes to a shop, shopping center, or a grocery store, and leaves your dog tied up out the front unattended whilst you enter the venue, you're essentially signing your dog's life away now in Australia, Australia has a very remarkably high rate of dog theft, mainly around a couple of reasons. One, resale value on small designer handbag breeds, French Bulldogs, Cavoodles, things like that. They fetch a sizable small fortune of money. Now the next scenario was actually worst case scenario. And unfortunately this worst case scenario happens more often than not. Now the main victims here are mainly household dogs. So just listen up. Australia has a highly sophisticated underground dog fighting ring. Now this mainly happens around the south coast, but essentially it is open to all of Australia. Now, unfortunately, a lot of family household dogs end up being victims to this. They essentially be stolen and used as bait dogs. What is a bait dog? So a bait dog is, bait dogs are used for training to test another dog's fighting instinct Large dogs are also used as bait dogs, except their mouths are often duct taped shut so they can't fight back and injure the fighting dog. When bait dogs have served their purpose, they are killed or either released quietly to die. Now, I would advise if there is one thing you can take away today, it is please do not leave your dog tied up out front of a shop unattended because it is just too easy to take Fluffy away. Number five, keep your dog on a lead. You could probably save its life. And be aware of what dogs are around your dog when your dog's on lead and they're off lead. So I wanna tell you a little scenario that happened just recently at our old place, uh, just up from there actually, just before we moved. So there was a scenario where an individual had their small reactive dog off lead in a cafe environment and 
this small dog unfortunately upset two greyhounds who were under a table, relatively well behaved, minded their own business. Anyway, this small Fluffy kept uh, annoying these two dogs to the point where these dogs snapped, grabbed this Fluffy, ripped it to pieces, actually killed the dog. Uh, apparently it happened very quickly and it was absolutely hysterical. Which one could imagine? Now, I don't envy any position of these individuals, either owner. One being the owner that lost the dog, or two being the owners that, realistically, it wasn't their fault, but their dogs killed the dog. It both really suck. But a couple of lessons to be learned here. That dog should have been on a lead, and if it was on a lead, this wouldn't even be a story. This would not have even happened. Fluffy would still be alive. Number two, even though these dogs, you know, relatively well behaved, these greyhounds chilling under the table, things are gonna happen. Your dogs will be annoyed and upset sometimes. So you need to make sure you have control of your dogs. Even if they're on lead, you gotta make sure if something like that happens, you're able to break it up. Look, completely different, but I've been in positions where we've been in German Shepherd meetups with Lucy and she's had a scrap with another German Shepherd and yeah, it's not nice to have to get your mitts in there, but sometimes you just have to do it. So, and it, it happens in a split second and you've got to be willing to just jump on it in a split second and not let it get to the point where another dog's killing another dog. Now, again, I wasn't there, so I can't cast judgment, but just the lessons to be learned here, guys, keep your dog on a lead. And if you're gonna have high caliber dogs, you, you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna, if, if something happens, you're the first point of contact. Even if it's not your fault and you're following every rule, if something like that happens, your responsibility is to make it unhappen. Rightio guys, that is it for five things to know before getting a German Shepherd. Bit of a different spin on it today, and obviously these things can also be applied to owning any dog, but it's just fun doing it around German Shepherds. Because I've got a German Shepherd, makes sense. Uh, anyway, just quickly, guys, if you do enjoy this content and you want to support the lovely lady Lucy over here, please feel free to join our Patreon. Uh, we do have perks with your donations. Firstly, you'll be helping to support the channel. To any donations that we receive, do just get directly reinvested into the channel. Oh, hello, are you okay, young lady? Do you want some donations? Uh, these are all muchly appreciated, but either way, we obviously love running this channel and we will continue to do so all the time. Another thing, guys, uh, super amazing news. You may or may not have heard, uh, you probably have, we have a baby on the way, so we are super excited. Loose and just to clear up as well, when we did the announcement, so Flick and I are having a baby, my wife's having giving birth to a child in about four and a half months time. Um, when, when we made the announcement on Lucy's Instagram, people thought Lucy was having puppies. Um, I wish because we get a lot of money for those puppies. Hey. No, <laughs> just joking. Lucy's de-sexed. She is, uh, she can't have puppies. But no, this is going to be very exciting. Lucy's going to be a big sister and I can't wait to create a whole bunch of content around having a new baby, German Shepherd. People seem to, you know, freak out a little bit, kids and big dogs like this. So we're going to show you guys how it is done. I'm actually going to implement a dog trainer to help me uh, introduce Lucy to the baby and things like that. I think it's going to be fantastic and we're going to help build a, a bond between our baby and Lucy because Lucy needs to understand she's not above the baby. Um, and then me as a responsible adult, I need to teach the baby and young child or toddler and then child and then young kid that she also needs to respect the boundaries of Lucy. So this is gonna be great. I'm really excited about creating this content, um, which I think is just gonna be fantastic. And which leads me, guys, to the end of this video. If you've tuned in for now, up until now, thank you so much. It means a lot. Watch time is important for these videos. Um, if you loved it, the best way you can support us literally is by liking, subscribing, and commenting your thoughts down there. That is fantastic. Guys, until the next video, we'll see you next time.